Good day, my brothers. This is The Order. Welcome back to The Order. I'm Celtic Templar, and today, y'all, we're talking about this beautiful sword. Say hello to the Fidder Lane Sword, or in this case, the 8th century Saxon Sword. Now, I'm going to put this out here. These type of swords were actually as well used by late Romans, which is why I'm also wearing the late Roman helmet. Uh, now, I want to put this out here. This is actually an extremely long type blade. In fact, it's Overall length is 36 and 3 fourths of an inch. Its blade is 30 and 7 eighths of an inch. Weight is 3 pounds and 3 ounces. Width is uh, 46.8 millimeters. Thickness is 4.5 to 3.1 millimeters. Its pommel design is of a nut and riveted. And as well, its point of balance is. 3 inches and 7 eighths of an inch, which is right about there. I'm trying to get it in balance. So yeah, it's real close to the grip, meaning there's a lot of weight in the grip. Which, that is pretty much where it's perfect to be used. Uh, now, its grip length, speaking of its grip, it has a 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. So that's actually perfectly good to hold the hand in place, as it does. Uh, the blade is made out of EN45 high carbon steel, or Damascus, depending on which one you buy. Just like the same with my last uh, sword review. Uh, now, this one you can either get with full brass design, or you can get what I got, which has what they call a silver plated, or in this case, a tin plated is what I like to call it. But I do love the fact that they did try their best to making sure it's historical to the point on the beautiful design on the handle. Which, that is actually pretty cool. Now I had to get this sharpened, so it does take a while. So how do I feel with this weapon? Pretty awesome. I feel like a Roman soldier, or a Roman imperial officer for example, using a sword like this to defend myself. And... There were swords like this extremely long for major reasons because they needed to have a type of distance. However, only the most uh, wealthy elites could afford these. So in other words, a king maybe, a wealthy nobleman, it depends. But I have to say it is pretty nice. The grip is awesome and as well it has the historical Viking lobe design as we know it, which that's really cool. But the design on the grip is just perfect. Even though it's has made of metal, it just wants to keep my hand locked in place, which is perfect. Meaning I can do cuts, and as well I can do thrusts perfectly, and well, suitably enough, to be used in warfare. So this is actually saying of how cool these weapons were. So in other words, let's imagine if I'm in the front row, using the sword, alongside my men, I'm fighting, and I'm stabbed, somebody real <laughs> in a farther distance than I would with a Roman Spatha. Now, why was a sword like this this long? Simple, it might have been a cavalry sword that the Romans might have used, or in this case the Britons might have used, and in such the Saxons might have copied off of them. Now, I want to put this out here. Uh, I had to use the baldric, or in this case elongated uh, belt, for this, and as well it does come with a nice scabbard, which does have a jeweled butt design on the bottom which is pretty cool. Uh, other than that, it just comes with a regular wooden sheath. So, though, this is actually pretty awesome to you for anyone to actually use for their uh, collection, especially on Saxon weaponry or even late Roman. Because this feels more like it's a late Roman sword, or in this case, a Briton sword, such as the time of King Arthur, for example, which, whenever we think of King Arthur, I would think of something like this, or in the Beowulf sagas. Now, if you already know that I always bring up Beowulf sagas, because one, this looks like something out of Beowulf. Perfectly awesome. So, why were these swords so awesome like that then? So why would I call this a cavalry sword? Why would these uh, weapons even be used and such? Well, for one, they might have been used as a show off my prowess. It might have been used to 
uh, explain that I am rich. It might even explain that I'm a cavalry officer. It might explain that I'm an officer in general. But we can also explain to the fact that this would be a perfect way to show off. Now, I'm already hearing many people might start asking, Templar, would this uh, grip make it near impossible to control? Actually, no. Because the fact the grip is so uh, narrow, this actually locks my hand into the weapon. Kind of like what we see with ancient Celtic swords, for example, that have the human design grip. Which means the hand is meant to lock in place. So that way, even if you do a cutting blow, it does not want to break free. So, this sword does seem like it would work. Now, I do have to be careful because this is sharpened, and, uh, now you're reading people already asking, Timor, why didn't you just get this in, uh, well, I will hear people saying, well, uh, Damascus Steel, which I was thinking of maybe, but when I put it into thought, not a good idea, because one, Damascus Steel ones are extremely expensive. In fact, this, if y'all actually see the price range of these type of weapons, uh, that's how much these are between each other. And the fact is, these do cost a lot. So, uh, and that's actually with it just being showing up blunt. So, just imagine how much more you're going to have to put in to have it sharpened. And boy, howdy, did it, was it sharpened. Now, maybe people want to start saying, Okay, Templar, if this thing is awesome, would you use this as a cutting weapon? Yes. Would I use it as a thrusting weapon? Yes. Would I use it as a bashing weapon to human skull? Maybe, but that might damage the value of the sword. Because one, we don't exactly have much evidence that uh, shows weapons were being used to bash in a skull or pretty much the eye sockets, but I could see why, because with this late Roman helmet, uh, it kind of makes it almost near impossible. Unless somebody gets me right in the eyeball, or right in my teeth almost, but this is just where it wants to go, but it, uh, it's kind of like almost touching my lips. So the eyeballs are the best option, but still that's probably much where I would want to tuck my head in to stop it from happening. So still, this weapon would still be awesome, for a reenactor. So yes, perfect for reenactments, perfect for warfare, and perfect for the household vikinger, or as well, Saxon. Now I hear many people already saying, uh, but Templar, if this is a Saxon sword, then why we, are you wearing a Roman equipment? Well, as I said, Romans were the type of equipment that later on the Saxons would have adopted and modified. In fact, uh, many Saxon-style uh, helmets and equipment were used by the said, uh, well, Romans, or in this case, the Roman Britons, who and which did use some equipment like this to actually fight against the, well, invading Saxons when they still had a chance to, until they were pushed back into Wales and Cornwall. So, pretty much, you can understand the history about it. But still, weapons like this are perfect for reenactors. And the fact is, I chose the... This design with the silver plating with the brass uh, hilt, pe hilt ring because it felt more accurate. I didn't want to get the show-off look of the brass because then it would just look ugly to me. So, uh, now I hear maybe you're already asking, Tomorrow, can you do a cut test with this? No, I'm not about the damage this blade. Damaging a blade is very dangerous. If you want uh, somebody to do it, you might want to ask Skullagrim. He's crazy enough to probably damage a sword and probably worry about it coming back at him. Because, one, I'm not crazy enough to actually deal with that. So, yeah. Still, though, I would have to say this is perfect for anyone who is willing to get a historical sword. In fact, I do like the fact on how they got the guard on how small it was. Because, one, guards back then did not uh, protect your entire hand. In fact, sometimes the hand just, well, overwent the guard entirely like that. But it's still perfect to it how it is. And I love on how the artwork is. And as well, our entire silver, like, ring on it. Because one, this actually is this perfect for anyone who is wanting a historical den or uh, type of uh, showpiece in their home. And this would be one of them. So yeah. I give it a 5 star review. But anyways guys, hopefully you like this video, like and subscribe for more. And as well, if you want to check out more of my reviews, please hit that subscribe button so that way you can stay tuned for the next video coming. 
And as well, you know, if any of y'all have any ideas I should take a look at, like say a weapon or a helmet, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get right into it. Anyways, guys, it's been Celtic Templar. Have a great day, and maybe Odin be with you.